Here we are, it's episode 20. And today I have a different mid plate from the last episode. I found out that you can't run those type of engine mounts or rear uh, mid plates, sorry, um, at NHRA tech like events because it leaves a gap in the bell housing, which obviously, um, Maybe with a scatter shield you're allowed, I'm not sure, but I'm not going to run that because I got the the SFI bell housing and it's just silly to try to do it that way. So, <clears throat> I've got the, it's an 090 steel all-star mid plate and I got the longer dowels for, for the trans and uh, engine and yeah, I'm gonna have to do a travel limiter, but that's all good. And I'm gonna start on that today. Uh, this last week, I did get a little bit of time and I added a crossbar here and tied it into the uh, coilover bar. Just because where the frame has been so notched, I didn't want to uh, not have something going across there. I just thought it'd be flimsy and I don't want to buckle my, my Bondo quarter panel, so threw that in there I'm also going to throw in some BMR upper control arm braces that tie into the lowers that um, got hooked up from Devin Levi I think his last name is so shout out to him and yeah we're just gonna get started here I did check the that the engine and trans are in line with the rear. I used my plumb plumb bob there. Dropped a line at the crank and at the tail housing on the trans at the output shaft. I got my lines here. I shot a laser on it too and we're perfect. It's 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 in super shape so now I can drop that mid plate in there and, and know that I don't have to move anything from where everything was just just to be safe and be careful and you know once you do plates you're kind of stuck with what you got so not really I guess it could be modified but why do it twice all right I'm gonna get started on that and you can follow along working on the control arm braces first these um, because I have the, I think I got them from Trick, the lower control arm braces. They have a, a pocket kind of that um, encapsulates where the nut goes. And these are not designed for that. So they're too big. So my first thing I gotta do is trim these down to fit in that pocket. And I'll be able to see what length bolts I need because the stock bolts were already too short. That one's all the way through right now and it does not grab the lock part of the lock nut like this side, see? So I needed longer bolts anyways. I'm glad that I am going to do this now and I didn't buy bolts already for the braces and the setup I have. So that was cool. It'll save me probably friggin' $20 in hardware. You know how hardware is now. It's crazy. So I'm going to trim those down and we'll get them to fit. So the pocket opening on the control arm braces is one and a quarter inch. So I need to take three sixteenths off each side of this thing so that it will slip in there hopefully. stock bolts are 12 millimeter and they didn't have any 12 millimeter in the length that I needed. I needed a two five and a half inch bolts and two four and a half to get through that and on the bottom stuff extra length here or width. Um, so I got half inch bolts 
and I have to drill this just, it's like one millimeter difference. Uh, the bolt won't go through there though. The threads will, but the shank on the bolt won't. So just drill these out so I can get the uh, bolt through it. Same thing on the body. I had to drill all the, the stock um, bolt holes out just ever so slightly with a half inch bit. There's nothing glamorous about this because I can't, it's just such a small amount of material, the bit gets bound up a lot, but it'll go through there. Oh yeah, we got them in there. We got those arms in there. Check it out. I was gonna paint them black and I figured, what the heck, what's the point? They're on here and I don't really give a two shits about it, so. Um, yeah, basically the job of those is when the rear axle sees power, it pushes the car with the lower arms, but it pulls from the uppers. And that stock cross member that those upper arms attaches to isn't the thickest thing ever, so I did, if you guys remember way back, I did these arm braces in here. Let me get the weight. I did upper arm braces from Trick Chassis way back. That you weld in right there. That one inch bar with the plates on either end. And then we steadied it up now on this side. And I also threw a bar up there from the coilover bar to the upper control arm cross member. I've got about an inch of clearance there. If I have to take it out, I will, but we'll just have to see if it hits or not. I figure usually the way you set these cars up is you got a six or whatever inch stroke shock coil over in the back and you when the car's at ride height you only have an inch of compression anyway so should be okay and see where I trim those to make them fit in there that one's just trimmed a little extra got the long bolts up top yeah good to go let me back up here, give you the full length view. Pretty sweet, man. Start on that mid plate now. I'm gonna support the engine with the screw jack and pull the trans. Start cutting the uh, mid plate up to make it fit. I don't think it's going to take much. Only I think it's only going to need to be cut on the driver's side. So that's pretty slick. A little rough line here on, on both sides. I'm going to trim out so that it will fit up in there. Um, I think I'm going to do something around the pinch here. I don't know whether I'll modify the pinch or the um, mid plate, but we'll find out. I'm going to cut that now and then uh, get it back up in here see if I can bolt it in. I cut quite a bit off of it actually. And uh, I got about a quarter inch gap on each side. Which is good. And now I'm going to just take some eighth inch plate and make some brackets, drill through them for the holes to mount it on the frame. And before I weld it, I will probably fire the transmission back in it line up the, the trans mount, make sure we're still in there straight and uh, then we'll be well on our way to being done with the mid plate. Just one inch flat bar that I trimmed around the plate angles and time to weld her in.
she is. All welded up, both sides. Good to go, man. I do think that that, just that 90 thousandths thickness, I was already riding the back of this slot on the trans mount, so probably what I'm gonna do is just uh, break the tacks on there and hole saw a little bit of material out of the back of that so I can move the whole assembly rearward on the cross member. And uh, then the trans will go back in. All right, so the motor plate's done. We're on to new stuff. Today I spent some time and I got the pinion, uh, pinion angle set, the, the axles centered under the car, the wheelbase is, is, is uh, good to go, 108 inches for a G-body factory length. And I wanted to do all that so I could plot my four link bars and see where my instant center was and if I had uh, anti-squat in the car or not and um, so I could get an idea of if I was going to have enough adjustment and you know so on and so forth so basically what I ended up with was I only have three adjustment holes on the rear on the on the bottom bars and all of these equal uh, at this ride height they all equal um, anti-squat so what that means is when I let go of the trans brake, the car isn't gonna squat. The angles are pushing the body of the car up, which is a good thing um, in most scenarios, especially with a drag radial. Remember I switched to a slick. So when you let go of the trans brake button, the rear axle is trying to drive um, the, the back of the car up and when it does that it puts more weight on the rear so you got to lift to lift 100 pounds you got to put 100 pounds on your feet right so that's good for traction and all that the problem with it with a slick is you can crush the sidewall like like I can make that rim look like it I can make that tire look like it's flat if I hit it too hard because the slick has such a uh, uh, softer sidewall than a drag radial so my plan is I need to get a little bit closer to that neutral line so that I'm not squatting but I'm not anti-squatting and making all that separation. Um, I, I think I'm going to favor to have a little anti-squat in the car uh, and have a good coil over with really tight rebound so that it does, so it takes the hit out of it but it lets it slowly separate going down the track. Uh, but I think right now I don't have enough adjustment to kind of play within the window that I want. With the car set up the way it is now, I'm between 120 and 140 percent anti-squat with the adjustments that I have. And I'd like to be able to go between like 90 and 130 or something like that. So I can play around with it and see what the car likes. So to achieve that, I'm going to take this all apart and put another hole three quarters of an inch higher than this one where I don't have one and which means I'm gonna have to add some material in here because it's got two three sixteenths plates stacked up and there's nothing where I want to put my hole so I gotta kinda level that out with some material and then I'm also gonna do the trick chassis um, instant center brackets for the body side on the upper arms so that I'll be able to shorten the instant center length because if I just do the holes higher on the bottom I'll get the the neutral line like 100% anti-squat but it's going to be way the heck out front in front of the uh, sorry guys my video cut out there so if I if it's way out front like that it'll be in front of the center of gravity point um, which isn't ideal I guess it's it's ideal for some applications, but uh, it can induce um, tire shake. But anyway, we'll get we, we can get you guys. There's a lot of other videos on that you guys can look up. So I kind of want to shorten that up between to have it be between like I don't know, say 40 and 50 inches center length, instant center length, and have you know 
uh, a window of 90 to 130 uh, percent anti-squat and uh, I think that will give me enough room to mess around with the car and it should work almost in that whole range just at one end or the other or in the middle is going to work better than the other adjustments so I'm going to get started on making some making those holes making some pieces to fill that gap that's in there all right it's actually the next day here you guys this kicked my butt last night but i got both of those done on both sides our upper holes now We're, we got a three quarter of an inch uh, gain on the rear lower bracket which put us at this is my drive height i my, my ride height right now so we got a slight uphill going to the body now it's not so aggressive and once I get the five hole instant center brackets from trick chassis for the upper arms on the body side I'll be able to put a steeper angle on those arms which is going to let me shorten my instant center up and with the lower bars now being a little higher in the back my I won't have like a crazy anti-squat number um, with the upper bars being at an angle to shorten the instant center so we're in a much happier range once i get those upper brackets in there at the ride height that i want to run so good deal on that uh, i'll show you guys a little picture of the little pieces i had to weld inside there to keep the bracket flat for the control arm to slide up and down Yeah, I'm going to move on, uh, round this video out. I'm going to weld up the um, anti-roll bar tabs on the coilover bar up here. These are just QA1 coilover tabs that you can use for, you know, anything. Any roll bar, travel sensors, coilovers. I think they're 3 16 thick. You can buy them in a little, a little kit comes with uh, four brackets, so enough to do, you know, two coilovers or whatever. Or I guess it would be one coilover top and bottom, but uh, here's the kit. Comes with the two bolts, two nuts, and four, four of these. Cool little kit though, makes it nice and easy. Gives me a good distance of uh, standoff from my bar that I'm mounting to, to the, sh to the eyelet. So you got plenty of room for your rod end or whatever you're putting in there. So I'm going to do that and then I'll give you guys a little send off before I say goodbye before the next video. Okay, first thing I got to do here is shorten this bolt up. Because when I put it up in there it's really close to my little brace here that I put in. Um, and another quick note. When you guys weld in your your solid anti roll bars, you want that bottom arm to be flat with the ground at ride height, so that it has the most leverage it can on the on the car to keep it flat. Um, let's say so, like right about there, something like that. And you can adjust that too, obviously with your with your link, I've got adjustment here and, and and down here to set that flat, depending on where my ride height is or or what I set it to. But that's important. I just wanted to make sure you guys don't put your arm your don't put your top brackets on with your freaking sway bar link arm like that or like this, because then it doesn't have any leverage or working range of motion. I got my link leveled out the right length and my tabs up there with a magnet holding it if you can see that I'm, I'm pretty much zeroed straight up and down so I'm gonna tack this and then I gotta clear the paint off of that side do the same thing over here
solid freaking ARB now. Yes, sir. Get in there, you guys. Okay, that wraps up this video, this episode. Um, I cut these spring perches, these adjustable spring perches off of my 12 bolt on Ron Burgundy and I don't need these. So I'd like to give them away to somebody that is watching the channel. Um, so if you are in need of these adjustable spring perches, you know, they're used obviously, so they got some dings and scratches, but they are perfectly working condition. So save somebody, I think they go for like 140 bucks. So if you need those, comment down below and I'll get in touch with you and it can be more than one person. I know, you know, they, this could help out a couple people. So I'd like to get to uh, know a couple of you guys, what you're doing and uh, why you think, uh, you know, you deserve those. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not gonna make it that hard, but um, just trying to be a little interactive with you guys. And uh, I'll mail those out. I'll pay for the shipping and whatever. So yeah, comment below if you, if you need those and uh, get the ball rolling, get them to your door. Thanks for watching you guys. I'll see you in a week, hopefully.